adventurers quested throughout the land seeking fame and fortune. People turned to these heroes for protection from the forces of darkness. This call to adventure was answered by many. <laughs> Not all of them were quite the heroes they were looking for. Uh, welcome to episode three of Bards and Nobles. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyone, anyone have any announcements or plugs that they want to do? No? We no, good on that? I, okay. I don't have anything. Um, all right, so I'm going to play some D&D. Uh, I'm Brian, the Dungeon Master, and we've got... Or you, yeah, you, go ahead. Uh, Aaron Williams, playing as James McMahon, the Bard. Andrew Danon, playing as Theron, the Rogue Wood Elf. Uh, Charles Nelson, playing as Keyfrit, the Sorcerer. Token magic user. Anthony Boyd, I was playing the ranger known as John <laughs> Matt. Um, we're going to find out and see if I'm going to keep playing him or if we'll play somebody else. <laughs> I'm Trey. I'm playing as Kraken, the half-orc barbarian, and I may kill the bard. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go ahead and pick up where we left off last time. Uh, can you, Aaron, catch us up? Yeah, yeah. Uh Last time on Bards and Noble, we were in a serious tussle with a giant octopus that was wrecking the ship. And uh, after a couple of heated exchanges with a few tentacles, Krognak saw uh, an opportunity, jumped into the water to take the beast, quote unquote, head on. And uh, <laughs> at this point, the ship was filling with water threatening on sinking, James successfully uh, saved a ratkin from death and also directed everybody to start uh, plugging up holes in the ship and uh, James single-handedly <laughs> saved the ship from sinking. Not biased at all. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> this is James singing the glory of James here. Yeah. <laughs> everybody else did good work too. And then Kraken needed help onto the ship. Guess who was there? It was James and uh, helped Kraken back onto the ship. Went searching for Krognak only to find that Krognak, while he had driven off the octopus, had been snatched up and taken away. James managed to make it to Krognak to find him lifeless. Brings him back aboard the ship with no <coughs> movement in Krognak. And that is where we will pick it up. Uh, that's exactly where we'll pick it up. So you guys, <laughs> everybody but uh, Krog, heck. <laughs> Theron, Keith, you guys are standing on the deck uh, along with the rest of the crew. James and Kraken, you guys have just pulled Krognak's, Krognak's body off the lifeboat onto the main deck. Um, after trying a couple different spells, James, you tried to revive him, bring him back, use your mm -hmm. medicine kit. Uh, did all the all the medical knowledge you know mm -hmm. uh, to try to bring him back and still nothing. Mm. The uh, <clears throat> a sad day. The air is is as still as the seas around you right around you guys right now. Just still as far as the eye can see, all the way to the horizon. Um, Any no no clouds? wind. Uh, it's overcast. Ah. So there's all, all the clouds are all clouds. over. <laughs> Um, everyone, everyone in the crew just kind of holding their breath uh, to see what happens. Uh, crowding around you, you three, uh, James and Kraken uh, over Krognak's body. And out of nowhere, two of the crew members also collapse to the floor. Um, and you, you see that it's uh, both Dodd and Marcus um, have fallen unconscious. Mm. Um, yes. What a shame. Uh, James, can you do anything about that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me go check that out. Um, so I run over to uh, the one that's closest to me. Okay. That'll be Dodd. Okay. And uh, just to, you know, do a quick, a quick check to, to gather what his condition is and, it, you know. It, right. Go ahead and give me a medicine check. Okay. Well, I want so Dodd to live, just... so I will not use my wood. <laughs> Yeah, you're just like checking his body. Or you're going through your ABCs, your airway, breathing, and, and check his circulation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
You productive <laughs> suit. <laughs> Uh, so the, James is the, over there molesting with the, <laughs> the intricate system. <laughs> no, uh, oh man, his his breathing seems to be short and shallow. He's completely unconscious, uh, but you do notice a number of lesions uh, around his body. Uh, these purplish kind of bulbous lesions have started to form and blister. Uh, they look to be in the shape of suction cups mm. uh, and you look over and marcus is starting to, is showing signs of the same thing um kraken uh just giant you hickeys. see you see those same blisters and, and lesions all over Krognak's body as well mm. well okay uh I, I see this happening and i would like to to do <clears throat> mass cure wounds to heal, to, you know what? Let me just do a small healing word upon him. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm going to do a, a healing word on both of them. Okay. Uh, so that's two level one spells. Okay. A one, one D4 plus charisma. So for Dodd, it is eight. Eight health restored. Okay. And for uh, Marcus, it Damn. is six health restored. All right, one sec. Shoving the lead back in here. Okay, you uh, you cast your spell, and on both of them, you can tell the they kind of breathe a sigh of relief, but they still remain unconscious. Mm. Um, it looks like whatever has gotten a hold of them, it's it, it seems to put them in some type of coma-like state. An octopus, probably, would be my guess. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Have you encountered any octopus in the past uh, five to ten minutes? <laughs> I, uh, I would like to, to tell Kraken if, if he is around that, uh, you know, I, I've done all I can for these men. I, it, it, is, it is my conclusion that they just, they need maybe time and rest. Uh, is there any crew that's awake? Yeah, uh, most board. most of your crew uh, is up and about on the deck. Everyone's just kind of watching uh, with their breath held. <clears throat> the uh, you notice the the ones that aren't up on top deck are Rathmite, um, Rathmite, and Cenobs are both not there. Everyone else is on top. Also, Tegan's not there. Tegan is also missing because <laughs> if you remember. He was dragged into the depths uh, by the giant octopus. Yeah, eaten. That what? almost dragged Krognak down yeah. as well. I think Krognak was the only one who saw that. But for everybody else, it's Deacon Stone. Not, yeah, that's all. Yeah, he, he I, I saw him get yeah. wrapped up. Yeah, and I, then, I, but he was like, I, I went in the water after him. Mm. <clears throat> but he was gone. Um, all right. Uh, I call for some of the crew to come over and okay. tell them to help them below deck. Okay. And then I'm going to go below deck and survey the damage to the hole. Okay. Uh, the, some of your crew members pick up the Dodd and Marcus. Um, did you want some of them to get Krognak, or what, what are you doing with Oh, yeah, grab Krognak, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that just guy. Just leave him on the deck. <laughs> you jerks. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of them kind of give you weird looks when you, you don't know. You grab did. Krognak, uh, just because out of the three that have fallen ill, he's the only one that's completely lifeless. They bring him downstairs. You go below deck, and you see Raphmite also in a similar condition to Dodd and Marcus. Uh, it's a little harder to see because of the fur, but he's also got some of the same bruising and, and blistering going on. Uh, C-Nubs is down there, not unconscious, but he is hurt. Uh, it looks like his arm is pretty jacked up, and um, he's, he's just he's kind of covered in blood on one side. Uh, you survey the damage. Doesn't look too bad. Thankfully, between James, Theron, and Keefs, and Arnando, and just the rest of the crew, during the battle with the octopus, they did a pretty good job of keeping up with any breaches in the hull or uh, any damage. Uh, Kept your ship some of your, into a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> some, of your, some of your supplies got uh, damaged as far as like food. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, everything seems to be intact at this point. Yeah, I tell Kraken that uh, I directed the men to repair the ship before we sunk. Arna Arnando makes eye contact with you and just shakes his head. <laughs> nope. 
I, nope. I, I look at Arnando and I say, thank you, Arnando. <laughs> um, uh, James, can you can you help out the uh, the other injured crew? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, I go to the other injured crew. I'm no longer casting spells. Okay. I'm now using my healer's kit. Just let me know how many right. uses of it I use so that I can mark them off. For, for the most part, everyone else is in pretty good shape. Just a little scrapes and bruises. C-Nubs looks like he has a broken arm. Mm. And after surveying the damage and working with him a little bit, uh, you notice a laceration just kind of in his side and, and back. Um, give me another medicine check. Mm. Do I notice the laceration? 20. No. Okay. 20? Okay. Um, at first, it kind of looks like it could have been from debris, but after analyzing a little more and having been having seen some of it firsthand, you notice it does look like a cut from like a knife or something. Mm. I asked C Nubs what happened. Uh, he just he he just kind of shakes his head. He doesn't know. He just in the in the craziness of it, he, he must have fallen somewhere and gotten hurt. Mm. Got it. Uh, all right. Well, you know, I <clears throat> do what I can to bandage right, him just, up and everything. Yeah. And, just one charge. I make a mental note of the uh, of that oddity. It just, okay. You know, math doesn't seem to be adding up there. And... Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's everyone else? DM can? to do some math. <laughs> 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 yep. What's everyone else doing? Krognak, what are you doing? <laughs> he doesn't respond. <laughs> Does everyone stare at me as I talk to my dead brother? <laughs> no, you already talked to your sword. I feel like it's pretty good. <laughs> no one saw that. We've all seen it at this point. Shut up, you're dead. <laughs> you're right. All right, so what's going on, guys? Um, I'm just expecting for uh, any more damage I might be able to help repair. Okay. Um, oh, but anyway. everyone at this point is going on about their business, uh, going back to their typical duties on the ship. Uh, we're going into the... You said night. duties. <laughs> everyone takes a giant duty. Uh, no. <laughs> on the poop deck. And you go, I'm poop deck. I didn't void myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I was in the water. So. You're in the water, you're clean. <laughs> you it's all over James. <laughs> going, in, <laughs> going into dusk, you see... Uh, I assume at this point you made it back to the top of the ship. Yeah. Um, oh, and after being bandaged by James, Cenobs doesn't his his arm has completely uh, been uh, immobilized. Yeah, yeah, immobilized, just in, in a healing form, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know what the term <laughs> for that splint. is. Splint. Splint. That's what I was looking for. His arm's in a splint, and he okay. doesn't look to be in any condition to be walking around and stuff. He's he's actually, uh, you see Miss Frisbee kind of doting over him and just kind of, you know, yeah. taking um, care of him. Is he on the top deck with me? He is still below deck. It's, okay. it's kind of, it's pretty hard for him to move around after, after his adrenaline died down, after everything kind of slowed down. Sure. All right. Um, so there's no wind right now? There is not. It's, you guys have been at a, at a standstill for... A couple hours now. All right, I um, I go ahead and give the order to the crew to put the sails to full. Okay. So we can start moving as soon as, soon as we find some wind, um, and uh, continue repairs on the hull, make okay. sure it's strong. And I would also like to look around and see if I can, like, is there, is there any way for me to tell the direction the octopus went in, or is it just? At this point, not really. The well, last yeah. time you saw it, it went straight down. Right. And that's, you know, we're talking, going over with James what happened. You know, he, he went straight down and came straight back up. So as far as you know, it just, it went down. Okay. Into the depths of the All ocean. Right. Uh, I go and call for uh, bolts to be laid near the ballista and whatever ammunition the catapult takes. Okay. Go and put some near it just so we're ready. Since okay. we're not moving, just put Krodnak's corpse. In the <laughs> load load Krodnak's corpse into the catapult. Okay. Yeah. Uh, everyone answers your call, and they go and do whatever they're assigned to do. In the distance, uh, it's a new moon, so there's no no moon out. 
Right? Is that, that's, yeah, is that right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just, <laughs> it's a fantasy uh, world. It can be whatever you right. want. <laughs> uh, it's overcast, so you don't really see many clouds. Uh, it's pretty dark out. Um, wait, I mean, wait. it's overcast, so all you see is clouds. You don't see very many stars. <laughs> so wait, how I do we even say. know that it's a new moon? It could just be overcast, bro. But I mean, you, you we know our calendar bouncing off of yeah. Anyways, in the I know. far in the far distance on the horizon, you do see a speck of light, uh, just on like I said, just on the horizon. D- does my ship have any sort of rowing implements? It. Let me check the layout of your ship. Just fire up the diesel and go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. I crank up the trolling motor. <laughs> We're not going very fast, but it'll get us there. It doesn't. All right. <laughs> um, with my knowledge of the ship, uh huh. would I think that using the lifeboat as a towing vessel would work? Just the, the size difference of yeah. both the boat and the ship and the oars, probably yeah. not. Okay. Yeah. You just snap the oars. Even with your strength, you'd be like, yeah! <laughs> snap them in half. And you just I don't think I would snap. Like I, I feel like I would just like splash around. <laughs> <laughs> this water's so, this water's so thick. <laughs> but yeah, no. Couldn't do that. Okay. All right. You guys doing anything? Uh, how many... How many uh, Uses of my healer's kit did I come across? You have used three so far. Three, three additional. Yeah. Okay. I would like to call for Keith to the top deck. All right, <laughs> Keith. All right, I come to the top deck. Um, dun dun dun. <laughs> I don't really know what uh, you or the bard can do. Is there anything <laughs> you could do for my brother? Uh, I, I don't have any type of healing or resurrection magic, so oh, I can okay. I can do absolutely nothing. <laughs> he could hurt me more. <laughs> <laughs> Cremation, you say? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it. <laughs> Okay. Good day, Keith. <laughs> or evening. <laughs> At this point, uh, a lot of the sailors are just, they're pretty much ready to turn in. Uh, there's not a whole lot else they can do for the night. Is anyone else? Before the end of the night, I'd like to approach Kraken and, and, okay. and tell him that, uh, you know, I'm sorry for, sorry for your loss. I'm Sorry that I could not be there in time. Uh, I don't know how, but I am aware of magics that exist that might be able to bring Krognak back to us. I hmm. I don't know where, but I know that I know that magics like that do exist. And if I remember correctly, they are dependent on whether or not Krognak wants to be brought back. Mm. All right. Well, uh, I, thank you, James. Um, yeah. Can I actually roll to see if I do know a person where... I mean, it may not be anywhere near here, but can yeah. I just roll to see if I know of a person who practices such magic? Okay, sure. Give me an... an- just a straight intelligence check. Do you want me to take that one or no? Go ahead. Take it? Yeah. It was an 18. 18? No modifiers? Or is that, that what you're That modifier? was an 18 with no modifier. Okay. What did you say? Just intelligence, intelligence? plus your jack of all trades uh, as a okay. bard. So uh, <laughs> that would be 23. You know most most uh, big enough temples of to good gods? We'll have clerics that can do it, usually for a price. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Lavender, uh, Helm, mm-hmm. uh, some of again, just any any good aligned god will Got have it. clerics. In, but it has to be you know a of a prestigious enough temple mm-hmm. uh, to do it. Mm-hmm. You also know some wizards, creatures, or just any spellcasters in general of a high enough level or of a strong enough magic, more than likely has it more like it has enough power to do something like that Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. as far as specifics uh out of people you've met you know the people um 
at their there were strong enough magic users at the Temple of Omater that probably could have done it. Okay. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's good to okay. know. No um, one specific. I, I do I do relay that to Kraken, but I also uh, pad on a warning and I tell him that but you have to be careful with that magic because some of them will restore a life not worth living. They will restore a cursed life. I'm talking about like um, you know, raised dead and stuff. Right, like that. right, right. Uh, just the more, oh yeah, the more um, necromancy type right. stuff. Okay. Necromancy. Just shuffle it around, zombie crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> there and he's get, a heavy just keep on a chain and drag and him behind me. Bed. Okay, we'll cut his we'll cut his jaw and hands off. It'll be fine. You're <laughs> <laughs> shown with it. <laughs> All right, you guys doing anything else for the night? No, uh, I was just you know. I, I go to find I go to find Keith again. Okay. He's still standing right there. He never left. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's just staring at you. He's really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for me? <laughs> yeah. Uh do you have any sort of uh again, I don't know what it is you do. Um do you have anything like I don't know, a wind spell? What is it you say you do? <laughs> anything that could like <laughs> anything that could move us? I think I think we've drifted out of the jet stream here and uh i definitely do not have anything like most of, <laughs> most of my magic is for combat okay and killing things can, and can you explosions. combat the sails to <laughs> further? i what could i could repair like small tears in the sails using mending but it'll take a while he has like four spells and three of them set things on fire <laughs> <laughs> um uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need you to wear these mittens from now on. <laughs> I mittens. cast suggestion on the wind. No, are you, are you, not? <laughs> you cast suggestion on Zephos, God of the Wind. <laughs> Unless the wind is actively harming you, you cannot cast suggestion on it. Dang. So, like during a gale or a tornado. Uh, is that what you're saying? We'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> you can certainly try. <laughs> All right, so is everyone turning for the night? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I, I set up a watch for the night. Okay. And uh, I'll actually... It's I'll a actually, Timex. <laughs> I've never wanted to punch a corpse before in my life. Uh, but I will I will be on the, the, uh, okay. the last watch. So you guys are so you're basically just going to wake up early. <laughs> uh, everyone has kind of a bittersweet rest over the course of the night. Um, not really rocking. The boat is almost at a dead standstill. Um, and morning comes. Sun rises. The still kind of partly cloudy. Uh, still no breeze. Nothing is happening in the wind. Mm. But on the horizon, where in the direction you did see the light, you do see kind of just like a speck of something. You're not sure if it's uh, a ship, an island. Just, there's an object that's not part of the sea uh, over to the east. Mm. And you I'm look, clearly not going there. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> as you survey the the sea, open sea in the morning, you do notice the boat. Ship. begins the ship i'm sorry uh begins to move just a little bit <laughs> uh but there's no wind in the sails uh you do realize it starts to drift almost sideways towards that object is it supposed to do that and at this point arnando comes to you and he relays this information to you all right he's just like kind of kind of pulls you aside from where the rest of the crew he's like i don't want to sound crazy or anything but i think we're moving captain uh, do I do I have any sort of like uh, spyglass or anything in my sailing equipment? I'm not sure. Do you There's have spyglass in your spy? sailing equipment? I don't know. <laughs> to to mention it, they're pretty expensive in yeah. in the D and D player's hand guide. Oh, they're that's like right. Thousand gold. Okay. I, I no, you don't have a spyglass. <laughs> <laughs> you <poor> motherfucker. <laughs> I searched for a merchant that could sell me a spyglass. <laughs> it's him just holding his hands up yeah. in a circle. I, I find a paper, a paper towel roll <laughs> and hold it to my eye. Um, I, I wake up from my slumber and All I right. go up the top deck to see if there's anything I can help with. What okay. do you see with your elf eyes, Theron? No. <laughs> 
I overhear their predicament. They're yes. trying to see something from you know, kind sure. of ways off. I can find familiar and get me a bird and talk to that shit. Okay. And it's fine. So you begin, you begin casting your find familiar yeah. spell. It's like, yeah, do do that. Let's do this. All right. Anybody An else doing anything? Later. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go up to the helm and I'm going to turn the ship. I'm going to try to turn the ship towards it. So we're heading towards long ways. Faster. Yeah. Long okay. ways towards right. it. You do that. As opposed to sideways. Gotcha. Uh, the next 59 minutes goes by. Theron, you have summoned your what? Just summon, summon a hawk. Okay. Like pull a hawk out. It It is summoned. So, uh, wisps of energy pull through the air and form into a hawk. Hey, little buddy. Uh, he says hey back telepathically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to hey, you man. only. All right. so, like, we're being drawn toward a, towards an object in front of us. Can you go check it out? Uh, sure. Takes off, starts flying. Sweet. Um, he's got a good little hawk. <laughs> he, uh, he's gone. <laughs> He's That's gone a for a good 30 minutes or so. Uh, what's the range that you have to be to be able to telepathically link with it? Uh, I believe it's 100, it's like, feet. It's 100 yeah. feet. Okay, yeah, he's gone for a while. Uh, you see it come back within the hour. And as soon as you can link with it, he begins to relay information from you. And all you can tell uh, from what it's, it's telling you is that he sees a giant swan. A giant swan? A giant swan in the distance. Okay, well, I'll tell him just to, you know, have fun and fly around and keep his eye out for anything right, weird cool. and not go tell Craig. And... Oh, he takes off. So, apparently... So is that not what hawks sound like? No. Uh, I think it's crow. They more, they, ah! they more screech. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I feel like they just yell the word hawk. <laughs> hawk! <laughs> All right, it does that. It goes off in the air. Okay. It's, uh, like, it's like a Pokemon. <laughs> so, Kragen, my my hawk came back and reported that it it sees a a big black swan that we're being drawn towards. Did they ever say black? I don't think it said black. Shut up, dude. Hawks are colorblind, so it never it never relayed uh, the black part. I'm gonna infer. Are black. they not? No. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what point in the grayscale is this? Swan? It's we're all, heading towards something that looks like a swan, swan. a giant swan. <laughs> I'm going to assume it was a white swan. Is that, I feel like I'm really assuming it's race now. <laughs> <laughs> Just its color. Maybe, Anyways, it's a, maybe it's a yellow swan. You don't know. At this point, you guys have drifted enough. You can you can see it cresting on the horizon. You, you can see the shape begin to take form. And it does look like a giant swan. Uh, just kind of sitting there, bobbing. And you guys are, are drifting towards it. And this, as you continue to drift towards it, it gets bigger and bigger, and you can tell just from at this point how far away from it, how far away you guys are, how long you've traveled, and how much bigger it's gotten. It's not an ordinary sized swan. This is like Blimey. almost galley sized at this point. It's almost larger than that. It just looks massive. You guys at this point are still miles away. This, this is gonna be Millennium uh, Falcon versus Millennium Swan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I asked Theron. Uh, keep sending your. Uh, your hawk to check that out whenever okay. you can. We'll do. Gather more information. Um, I relay that to my my hawk to go check it out when we get closer. Okay. And um, <clears throat> I tell James. You no longer have uh, exhaustion. By the okay. Way. Just yeah. You rested uh, last night. I tell I tell James and Keith to uh, make ready. I have no idea what we're getting pulled towards, but a giant so swan. It's bigger than a bread box. <laughs> Can I tell if the? <laughs> can I tell if we're so moving towards right it now. or if it's moving towards us or both? Can I d distinguish that? Yeah, at this point, everyone on the ship is pretty much aware that because there's no wind in the sails whatsoever, it looks like not that the boat is being pulled towards it, but that the waters around the boat are kind of shifting and moving the boat forward. Ship. Ship. Submarine. <laughs> it's not a submarine yet. The caravel. <laughs> and it doesn't look like it is moving towards us. It does not. Okay. Actually, at this point, it kind of just looks like it's spinning. Huh. Slowly, but uh, spinningly. Okay. I, I would like to go below deck. 
and okay. find C nubs. Okay, he's resting in bed uh, next to his wife and baby. That right. slacker. Um, I, I just want to ask C nubs. Uh, do you know anything about like I don't know a giant swan? <laughs> He's, he just tells you he's never seen a giant swan before in his life. All right. Um, Would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> I can make that dream a reality. Um, Take the rowboat out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would like to tell him and what's his wife's name? Miss Frisbee. Miss Frisbee. That they can have the, uh, the captain suite for the evening so he can rest up properly. Um, all right, they they thank you profu- profusely, uh, and they begin picking up some stuff and like kind of like bring their stuff towards there. All right, all right, all right. Go back to the top side. Okay. Anybody else doing anything right now? Uh, I'm I'm up top, and yeah. I remember that uh, before uh, Krogneck died, he uh, mentioned he kept pointing out this cloud. Do I see that cloud? Give me a perception check. <laughs> That's an 18. It's above I'm, the I'm just swan. looking up and to see if I see it. A lot of the clouds have cleared. You do see that in the direction that he was talking about um, from behind you guys. You do see a cloud that you kind of unknowingly spotted all morning. It seems to be there is one certain cloud that looks like a different shape, a different color than the other clouds in the sky. Uh, and it looks to be trailing you almost. All right, so now now I'm suspicious of, of this cloud, so I go and find uh, Theron. All right. I have died Theron. in peace. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Keith? The poltergeist uh, on the boat is lifted. <laughs> but, but I finally before, breathed out my last breath. <laughs> <laughs> before uh, Krognak died, he kept going on and on about this cloud, that and I still, cloud, man. I That's still see it. What? But you have a, a familiar. I do. Could you potentially send it to that cloud to try to investigate it? I could. I uh, how, I, I look in the direction Keith is pointing. Can, uh-huh. I, can I kind of guesstimate how far At it is? At this point, he's pointing it out. It looks a few miles away. Okay. Well, I, I would, but it, it's a little it's, too it's far up away. The, uh, uh, it's up in the, uh, <clears throat> the sphere. <laughs> the, the, the water sphere the, the, that one yeah okay <laughs> so, so there's the atmosphere the stratosphere yeah. the water sphere <laughs> you can actually send your familiar as far away as you want to but just they can't just talk can't talk to, talk to you right okay well you're I, still linked as long as you're on the same plane right or something like that yes. something like okay. that okay something like that well first since the swans would be a more pressing issue yeah I would like to. What? How far away is the swan from us? Uh, it looks to be just you know two to three miles at this point. Okay. And it's massive. Okay. It's huge. Like if you guys were in a tugboat, it looks like the Titanic right now. Okay. Good lord. Okay. Wait. So in comparison, our ship looks like a tugboat compared to the Titanic. Oh, yeah. The cloud. Yeah. No, okay. no, no, no. To the tit- to the, the swan. swan is the Titanic. <laughs> oh. We it's button. massive. Oh, wow. Okay. I hope there's a cleric there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to tell my hawk to go fly out to the swan real quick, have a quick look, come back, report what he sees, and then fly out to the cloud that Keith pointed out. Okay. Take a look, come back, and report what he sees. He's a hawk. He should be able to fly pretty quick. It's only a few miles. So. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You send it off. <laughs> yep. He goes and fly, it flies off. He goes, Hawk! And he goes, <laughs> Hawk! <laughs> Hawk! Um, while that's going on, I would like to use my sexton, which I know I have a sexton. True. Find my position. Yeah. And then I would like to consult my chart. This, this is a family show, Trey. <laughs> Put that sexton away. <laughs> this is like anything. You know this family. isn't a family <laughs> show. <laughs> 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 a family show. Um, I mean, and I would like to consult my charts this. and see if I can figure out where where exactly we are and if there are any prevailing winds that we could try to catch. Okay. Because I really don't want to go towards the swan thing. <laughs> it's kind of weird me out right now. Okay. Uh, you do all that. You do whatever calculations you have to take. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after all your, your diagnostics, uh, you 
realize that, or you're able to surmise that you're about four days away from Luskin, about three days away from Deep Mist, and then you still probably have another six to seven days, depending on what uh, streams and like if you catch the right winds, away from what where you think New Pipe is. Okay. Um, right now, you're just you're literally just the definition of open water. Like it's you're just out. Um, so prevailing winds that I think we might be able to catch on our way to the Swan. Uh, there definitely should be. Okay. But you're not but catching not. any right now. Okay. I give orders to the crew to pull the sails up. Uh-huh. And uh, how, how far, how long do I think it'll take us to reach the swan? At this point, at the rate you're going, because you definitely picked up speed about 30 minutes or so. Um, I go ahead and give orders to clear the deck and for everyone in the fighting party to get on deck. Okay, you guys all hear this command. At this point, your bird has uh, come back to you. Your hawk has come back to you. Uh, and ah. it just relays information that... A hawk! A hawk! <laughs> it's just, it saw... Um, it, it realizes it's not actually a swan. Mm -hmm. uh, it sees just a massive boat. Okay. From, from what it can tell, it looks like a massive boat that seems oh, to be shit. carved. It's a massive ship. That, that could be a boat, be I don't carved know. carved into the shape of, of a swan. swan. Yeah. Okay. And did it see any, you know, weapons or personnel on it? Or is it, it definitely just... saw a lot of people. Okay. Uh, didn't make the distinction between weapons or mm. things like that or okay. what type of crew or anything. It just saw a lot of figures moving about on it. Okay. Um, I just, I just saw it. It's like, all right, thank you. Go, go see if you can see anything with that, that cloud we pointed out. Flies off. Ha ha! Uh -huh. And then uh, goes into That's the, the official sound of the hawk now <laughs> behind you. Uh -huh. Trademark. Yep. <laughs> Trademark that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> at this point, you guys can clearly see uh, you're you're coming up on this massive swan ship, and its its mast is a giant swan head, but it seems to be made out of uh, actual swan clams heads. and coral and bones of what looks like different fish types. And the whole ship seems to be carved this way. It doesn't wow. look like any wood or steel or uh, ships you've ever seen before. Um, it's definitely a much more organic look to it. Uh, but does, it seems to be in the shape of a swan. Does that, it have sails? It doesn't have sails. Hmm. Um, it has favela-like stacks and stacks of cabins in the middle of it. Um, but they're carved in a way that looks like the wings of a swan so as to give the the hmm. illusion of a of a swan shape to it that sounds and cool. as it as you approach it you get closer to it you notice the waters around you start to calm and the waters around the ship around the swan ship are calm and now you can see some of the members some of the people on board uh merfolk of different kind blues and green skins uh male and female none of them seem to be armed a lot of them seem to be in different levels of dress. Hmm. A lot of them seem to Naked be mermaids. in a state of carousing and partying. Yeah. Uh, not all of them fully dressed. Uh, there's just, and you can hear it now. You can hear laughter. You can hear cheering. You can hear just all kinds of things. There's hope for you yet, James. Uh, now at this point, you don't <laughs> just see merfolk. You see different type of fishmen. You see different type of kuatoa which you've encountered before in the sewers of, of yeah. Luskin, uh, which are just, they're just squattier fish people, uh, less elegant looking fish people than merfolk. Uh, and at this point, you guys are, are sitting dwarfed to less than a hundred feet away from this ship. Mm. Uh, all the party is just standing aboard. Uh, you see, are we still moving towards at this point, you guys have slowed down and just have, like, you just drifting. almost pulled up next to it, just kind of drifting a little bit. All right. Uh, I give the order to drop anchor and see if we can find the bottom. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming this has to be sitting on top of something. You let the call out. Uh, nobody responds. Everyone has gone below deck and kind of bunkered down. Oh, then I go to the anchor. <laughs> Remembering <laughs> that I ordered everyone below deck. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, Keith, Keith, and James, and then uh, Theron just kind of look at you and just give you a shrug. I'll, I'll help you with the anchor. <laughs> all right, I'm like, all right, guys, come help me lower the anchor. All right, so you, you throw the anchor down, and it it goes with with speed, um, oh, and stuff. the chain runs out and runs taut before it hits anything. All right. Um, <clears throat> Hmm. so are we still drifting towards you guys are just sitting uh next to it i mean maybe we could just tie off and find a way up top and just see what's going on and introduce ourselves <laughs> um from where i am on the ship uh-huh. and any of them have they like acknowledged me have they noticed the ship that no most of them are just in the middle of their uh Party. partying and revelry uh, all right. Um, we just ride up on some mermaid orgy. <laughs> what do you guys think we should do? Um, what? <laughs> all right. What does everyone else think we should well, do? I mean, in the middle, in, like as soon as you guys begin to talk, you hear a voice ring out, um, and it just says, "Hello!" <laughs> and you look up, and you see. A large, rotund, almost obese-like fish man. Green skin. Uh, he's got scaly, slimy uh, scales all over him. But he has fancy robes, and he's got ornate jewelry made of pearl and gold all over his wrists and his neck. And he has a giant gem that he wears on a crown on his head. Is this mm. hedonism mermaid? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a giant chair? His, his bottom half is actually a whirlpool of water and you can see him like standing on on the side hmm. and he kind of floats off of one of the higher uh cabins down to the main deck of the ship um give me an intelligence check okay james all right can we all do this we all yeah yeah see? everyone give me an intelligence check right <coughs> I <like> said, james <laughs> but you guys uh, do notice everyone kind of seems to step out of his way uh, even in the middle of their celebration, they just kind of acknowledge him and, and make way for him. With or without Jack of all trades? With. 12. 18. 7. Keith? Keith. I have a 19. Oh. 19. Uh, both Theron and Keith, you guys have, just based on what he looks like, you guys have heard stories before of, of water genies. Mm. Just kind of fitting this description that you see before you. Uh, very fish-like, very regal in appearance. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> a genie, you say. Uh, and, he, and he calls out to you. He's like, yes, yes, more guests. Please come aboard. And immediately, like, uh, magically, a ramp begins to come out made of uh, crabs that seem to come from a, a compartment on the side of the ship. They crawl up into place and lock into each other, and a, sh- uh, a red ramp starts to form towards your ship. Yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> All right, I feel like I don't have to warn everybody about crabs. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> just be careful. <laughs> They're itchy. All right, so yeah, the, the, the crabs make it to your ship and immediately <clears throat> clamp on. Uh, and this, this r- rock-hard ramp has formed. Rock-hard, you say? <laughs> I'm going to uh, go up, go up uh, the ramp. Yeah, we are now saved. Let's go. I'm going to okay. introduce myself to the what I assume to be a water genie. Okay. Have you told everyone that I assume at this point? Yeah. Okay. He's like, hey, guys, I'm pretty sure that guy's a water genie. Maybe he can help us out. <laughs> uh, all right. As you guys make your way onto the deck, you see firsthand, you know, just most like 90 percent of the population on this ship are just lost in in partying and stuff uh he or it rather um approaches you uh very lively very very jovial in nature uh and he just he greets you again he's like hello hello more guests more guests uh please come aboard and enjoy yourselves thank you for the invitation uh, i believe we will take advantage of that What's your name, good sir? He says, I am Shah Hajesperdon, seventh of his name of the House of Quay, second seed of the Citadel of 10,000 Pearls. And who am I speaking with? I am Theron. He immediately just, he wraps you up and gives you a hug. Do you have a nickname? 
<laughs> he, he gives you a hug and just kind of like this icky slimy mask just kind of embraces you and he kisses you on both sides of the cheek uh, and he says please just call me Sha okay Sha we can do that can you tell us more about this place no I think it's Sha, Sha. <laughs> okay Sha there he kind go. of blows you off and he's like please friends introduce yourselves I walk forward to shake his hand and I'm like James McMahon Count of Chesterville he, he takes your hand in both of his and, and he puts it in his mouth and just kind of... He doesn't kiss it, he just puts the whole yeah, thing he puts, in his he mouth. Yeah, he has this huge fish lips that just kind of envelop your almost bass-like mouth. Mm. He envelops your hand and leaves just this like gooey... like. Knowing not to be rude, I do not show any All right. disdain for such things. But at the first... And you introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but at the first sign, I would like to wash mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Standing at a distance <laughs> after seeing what just happened to the other two, two members of the crew, I say, I, I am Captain Kraken, uh, oh, captain of captain. the Morning Falcon. Yes, welcome to the Swan Song. And he does this like this fanciful bow, uh, and you can see water splashes everywhere, getting some of his nearby uh, constituents and people who are attending him. They just get splashed with water as he bows. With with one arm across my chest and one arm out, I, I bow okay. back to him. And then he stands back up, and then he, he uh, looks to you, Keith. <laughs> I am uh, Keithrit. I'm a sorcerer. Nice to meet you. Ooh, and he, he just claps like he looks. <laughs> uh, he looks very pleased. <laughs> <laughs> and that body on the catapult is our former mate, Croc. Now <laughs> <laughs> he's below deck. <laughs> oh, is he? Okay, yeah. never mind. The dead guy doesn't get to dictate where we put him. <laughs> <laughs> but what? <laughs> uh, I mean, that could have been a thing. At this point, he just he welcomes you aboard. Um, <clears throat> he asks you if if there's anything you need anything you would like anything you can do to accommodate you i i, I kind of make my way up to him and uh, i say uh do you have any healers here uh, he says in what kind of healing do you need i need someone brought back from the dead immediately his face lights up with giddy excitement he's like "Ooh, death i love it um <laughs> Sure, that sure. Bode well. I, of course, I can easily bring people back from the dead. It's one of my favorite tricks. I was like, is your name Frankenfurter? <laughs> uh, he laughs it off, obviously not knowing who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> what are sure you talking he about? <laughs> yeah. It's a doctor from Luskin. You probably know him. <laughs> How uh, how do you bring them? How do you bring people back? He says with my magic, of course. What kind of magic? Is it he, he tells you he's like I am a Marid, uh, and you know you and Keith are the only ones who know mm. Water Genie. That's their formal name is Marid. Okay, um, and they're usually for the most part, especially ones as high up in the hierarchy as him, are mm -hmm. pretty powerful magic users. Okay, um, so he'll have, he'll have something like Revivify or something like that. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe Keith and Keith and James are present. Yeah, yeah. Right? You guys are all still standing yeah. on the side of the deck. At this point, uh, Keith, you've been bumped into like people are literally doing it, just kind of bumping into you, and <laughs> other people are like spraying. You're not sure if it's wine or fish blood <laughs> or something. It's a very Caligula-like situation going on in the background as you guys are having this conversation. Uh, Keith, James. Um, do you know what school of magic he would use? James warned me against necromancy. Is is he actually going to bring him back, or is he going to bring me back an, an undead brother? Um, I don't know anything about... What did he say? Marine? <coughs> I, I don't know anything about Marine. There? Over, overhearing this conversation, he says, no, 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 I... I can bring back the living. That's no worry. I and I can bring him back exactly as how he left. Uh, I'd, I'd I'd like to do an insight check on that. Sure. Can I can I do one as well? Okay. Yeah. Natural okay. twenty. All right. He <laughs> is <laughs> he. The entire conversation so far, he seems perfectly genuine to every letter of word that he's spoken so far. Mm. All right. 
if uh, if you bring my brother back, what, right. what, what, what would you require of me? He says, well, the spell of resurrection is very costly. Uh, it requires a gem of equal or greater value to one like this. And he points to the one on his head. He does a very, like, big gesture. And he points to the one on his head. All I would ask is that you replace it for me. Um, James, what do you have? Um, do, do we have any gems in the bag of holding? Allow me to consult. I have <laughs> a I question. Have a half of a bar of gold. So you guys like pull back yeah, and like, you're going through. No, I, I'm going to keep talking about it. I tell James to look through the bag. Of okay. Holding. A I, question. I pull out of my own bag uh, half, a, half of a bar of gold that I have. Mm -hmm. And I say, is this, is this close to what you would want? He giggles to himself. And then he pulls out a, uh, a jar not a, not a jar. He pulls like like a, a water skin out that's that's scaly and in the shape of a seahorse. And he pops the top, and he goes and sprays out as if, as if it were champagne. Except gold coins are just flying everywhere, and they fly off the I, side of the boat. I don't think and gold is what he them. needs. He sprays some some uh, stand. Uh, I try to catch standards. His, I try to catch uh, as many gold. of those gold pieces as I can. Uh, and then he puts it away. He's like, I'm not interested in gold. I, I put my gold chunk back in my bag <laughs> and I just kind of pick up whatever gold coins <laughs> are on the ground and right. put those into my bag as I continue talking to him. All right. Uh, how, how many gold coins uh, do I get? I, I, I would like to consult Krognak and tell him not to steal from our get from from. Wait, wait. Not to steal. is dead. <laughs> is dead. Oh, Krognak! Yeah, tell him that quit, quit stealing stuff. Krognak. I, I, just, I meant to talk. Krognak to goes. Bleh. I, I kind of hold it up and just sort of like see his response to me picking up the gold coins. Yeah, I would like to consult him about stealing from this man who just offered such a generous. Yeah, he, uh, he he again giggles to himself and very lively begins rubbing his fins they're they're hand shaped but they they're like very fins he's a very anthropomorphic fish person uh and the the gold in your hand turns to water and the rest of it just turns nice. to water as well uh, all right um james do we have anything that he might be interested in uh at the moment not particularly. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I have a very particular jewel in mind. Uh, but Do you of need course, some yeah. people to get it? Bring you? your bring your friend aboard and we can get this underway. Uh, what what would you require? What can I get for you to, to pay you for this? Have you ever heard of the heart of Mala? Just 10 seconds ago. Yes. <laughs> I would just ask that you retrieve it for me. Uh, this, this sounds like a really loaded request. Uh, <laughs> where is it? It's close. Okay. <laughs> How close? <laughs> is it up high somewhere? No, no, no. It's quite low. Uh, it, does it have to do anything with a giant octopus? Hmm. I don't know. Oh God! <laughs> Where's water genie? Ever. <laughs> How would we get to it? Our ship is is pretty damaged. That's true. I see that your ship does look pretty rough. I'm sure some of my people can help fix it, but I would bring you there, of course. Hmm. Why haven't you retrieved it Wait. yourself? If you can just go there. Oh, and he goes to pat you on the head. He says, well, there are certain sanctions set forth by the Citadel of 10,000 Pearls that would prevent one such as myself from going and taking it. Mm. But... Taking it from who? Just from where it's at. Okay, but... Surely there's nothing that would prevent you people from taking it for me. What do you mean by you people? <laughs> <laughs> You're still dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a ghost. I'm a. You don't know. Is he a ghost? Because if, if he's, he's not a ghost, a ghost. all right. <laughs> I'm gonna say we don't have to worry about any of this. So, so you can teleport people from places. 
Of course. I believe I learned that in my third, maybe fourth century of living. Can I give you a name and you teleport that person here? Hmm. Perhaps, but that would cost you as well. Of course it would. Um, there's a woman I've been looking for. She's slipped our grasp so far. She's murdered my master and my family, and I'm trying to find her. Ooh, more death. You really I, are I would excited. like to kill her. Like the other survivor. Hmm. <laughs> the other survivor? Which other survivor? And then he goes on to tell you that they've, uh, that the swan song is is kind of a, a party boat of his, mm. and he's just kind of taking a tour through the plains right now. Uh, and he's, mm. he's picked up people here and there, uh, just around. Mm. Um, he at, just kind of avoids the question. Okay. Um, if, if we get you this gem, mm-hmm. and you bring back our friend... Yes. Would we be free to go? Of course. A deal is a deal. All right. Uh, Sounds good to me. I, hold on. Huh? I, I recall everyone back to the ship so we can discuss this. Okay. He says, of course, take your time. And he bows in a big motion with hand motions and everything. I, I do my best to mimic him. Okay. Whatever hand motions he does, I try. Give me a dexterity check. I just right. wave by and start walking back towards the ship. 17. You do pretty good. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's fairly impressed. He smiles deeply at you. Isn't that more of a performance check? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to find that. Charisma. That would be charisma. <laughs> but no, no. It's a very, it was a very intricate hand thing, so we'll do yeah. more like that. Yeah. So yeah, you guys make it all back onto your ship. The the crab bridge stays completely locked on. Um, and you can see him standing there. And at this point, there's like two or three Kuto around him kind of waving and fanning him. And then kind of like some of them are even like splashing water at him. And he doesn't look like he needs it. He looks like he enjoys it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so delightful. All right, you guys are all back on your ship. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, so, so what all do I know about water genies? Uh, you know they are. You rolled. You said like a nineteen, right? Yeah. That well, that was uh, to recognize what he was. I think so. That's fine. Uh, you just. I remember rolling a nineteen. Yeah, I don't remember what it was for though. You you know that most of them hail from the plane of water. Uh, they're very hoity-toity. They're very all about their image and their titles. Um, and they're very deal oriented. Like a deal is a deal to the letter. Always. Are they known to be like evil or good or they run neutral? The gamut from, ah, uh, so it could be any. Okay. Yeah. Really uh, I relay, the I relay all this information to the, to the party. Sweet. Um, and obviously, based on the type that he is, uh, after talking to him for a little bit, they're just they're very impressed by wealth, by nobility, by shiny things. Um, but then they also they're very political, politically minded. Hmm. That fish guy. Oh, kind of you guys shit. stand around, just kind of looking at each other. Everyone's still below deck. You just kind of not really um, knowing what to do. Uh, it, so we're we're kind of stranded somewhat because our ship's damaged and you know we're There's not no getting wind. the right wind and also you know Krognak is dead it looks like this guy can fix all of our problems but obviously there's going to be some sort of trick yeah if we i mean he said if we just bring him that gem we'll we'll be square so I wonder if he'll revive Krognak before we go get the gym. We can we can try to talk him into that. Because uh, we could probably use the firepower from what he's talking about. Yeah. If, uh, if what and he told know. us is true, then we'll probably need Krognak's help. Yeah. Um, Definitely. All right. If we're all, if we're all on board to... Uh, I mean, worst case, we get to murder some more stuff. Like, like where your head's at there. And <laughs> Keith, any objections? No objections here. James? 
Growing up in a house of nobles, you learn that rarely do people make an offer to you without benefiting without benefiting more so on their end. So that's true, but we're kind of in a crappy situation right now. Well, I mean, he said, bring him the gym. Can I do a history check for this gym just to see if I've ever heard of the heart of Mala? Sure. Brian's way of saying, sure, but no. <laughs> hope, <laughs> hope you're all a 20. Uh, history or intelligence? What do you want? History. Uh, that is going to be a 14 teen. 14? Uh, you've heard of the heart of Mala? as just being one of those rare oversized gems that haven't really haven't been seen but have been talked about in in fairy tales so i'm not even sure that it exists true got it (laughs) but Uh, you have heard of it in stories this actually makes me way more willing to do it and i'm i tell crocknack it's like i think tell who a Kraken. <laughs> Do we all look the same to you? I, tell I feel like that's Kraken racist. That I'm, you know what? I think we should be really cautious, but this is a really legendary opportunity to seek, to seek such a, a famous treasure and gain from it. I say we do it. Without saying anything to him, I go below deck. Uh-huh. And I, I find C-Nubs, uh-huh. and I tell him, we're, we're about to depart the ship. Okay. Uh, I leave it in your care. Okay. And, or, mm-hmm. or whoever you see fit to take care of it in your condition. Okay. As you tell him that, he's like, uh, yes, yes, Captain. And he's like, but I have to tell you, uh, did you see this? Um, and he points out, because he's staying in your cabin, hmm. uh, the two chests... Of gold that were brought onto your ship by uh, Captain Salazar's men, uh, they look dumped open, and one of them is completely on its side and open, hmm. and the other one is is kind of it's tossed about and it's on it's upside down. But the one that's open, the gold hasn't spilled out. The gold just looks like it's sitting there still. Uh, that doesn't moved. sound right. Um, I, I go and I, I just touch the gold, All right? And your hand passes right through it and right past it. You feel, uh, what feels like rocks. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, now. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and stop right there. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll end episode three there. Uh, and I guess we'll pick up next time. Uh, make sure to check us out on pretty much all the big social medias now. We have an Instagram, right? Correct. Yes. We have a Twitter. Yep. We have a Facebook page. We've got the website. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. ITunes. And we're on iTunes, iTunes. now. We're Stitcher, if anyone up. uses that. Stitcher, yeah. yeah. Pretty much any podcast software, right? Or app yeah. that you yeah. use. Bards you can and find us there. Bards and Nobles. Find us or we'll find you. (laughs) (laughs) All right, on that, we're going to go. All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.